show you how to solder a two bezel onto a ring band. However, first I want to show you about fabricated stones. So the parts of the fabricated stones that are really important to know are you have the table, you have the crown, you have the pavilion, the girdle, which is the one that goes straight across, and the collet. Now we get a lot of questions at Halstead about what size wall you should buy, um, if it should come with a seat or not. And let me show you the difference really quickly before I go over to the bench and show you how to solder that together. So if you get a two bezel without a seat, you're going to need to put one in. It protects the girdle and holds the stone in place. So here we have one without a seat, and we sell both by the way. We have one without a seat and we have one with a seat. So you want to go ahead and get the one with the seat. It'll make your life so much easier and you won't have to drill that seat in yourself. And what about the wall height? Okay, so a perfect height protects the stone. It has sitting in the girdle. It protects the whole stone is encased in it. And that's a great height. That's our regular um, series of two bezels. Now, we also carry low wall two bezels. And the problem with using them with fabricated stones is that you can see that the cullet is sticking down below the height of the wall on the two bezel. So you don't want that to happen because that will be painful. If in a finger setting, it would cut your finger. Um, unless it's a design element for a fabricated stone, don't get a low wall. So anyway, let's head over to the bench and I'll show you how to solder one, a ring band and a two bezel together. Right, now that we're over at the um, bench, I wanted to show you how to set a two bezel onto a ring band. Small ring bands, four millimeters wide band. And I'm also going to use a four millimeter two bezel and a four millimeter CZ. And what I want to do is I want to solder that two bezel onto the top of the ring band. Now this ring band is, um, has a curve in it, a bend in it, so I need to straighten that out because the two bezel will not sit straight on it right now. So I need to get a little, a little flat area on the top of it. So. What I'm going to do is there's two ways you can do it really easily. If you don't own a ring clamp, which I'll show you in a minute, you also can just use a piece of sandpaper and what you'll do is you'll just do a figure eight and make sure you don't pivot it. Don't pivot the ring band, just hold it firmly and do a figure eight. And it may take a while depending on the grit you're using, but you can quickly make a flat edge. Or what you can do is you can put in a ring clamp which is a little bit easier and use a file. And you can see I'm locking my hand underneath the bench pin. It just pushes it up against it. And now I'm just gonna use a file to quick, quickly flatten that side. Now it won't take much, so go ahead and check it often. And I want to just make sure that all the sides are resting on it and there's no gaps and that it's flat. The band itself is, is flat. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and solder it. I have a third hand right here and I'm going to place this ring band in the third hand. In the third hand, because it's steel, it will drain a lot of your um, heat and draw it down through it. And you don't want to do that. So you just want to put, you just want to put a little bit of the metal in it, enough to hold it, but not, you don't want to like put it in here like this because it'll take too much heat away from your ring. So just grip it at the end. Let me see if you can see that. I just have them in there a little tiny bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flux it. Now I'll place the two bezel on the top and make sure the two bezel has two sides. So one side is very, very narrow. And that has a seed in it. And this side is much wider. If you can tell, it's much wider, and that's the side that's going to sit down 
on top of your ring band. You want the narrow side up and the thicker side down. Okay, I've placed that on there. I'm using medium solder and I'm going to use little tiny pallion chips and it doesn't take a lot. You just want to drop one down there. Right into the middle. Right down around the side. So I put one on the left side for this side. This size of two bezel. And these chips are tiny. It's not like wire solder. Okay. Now I'm going to light the torch. And remember your torch always sits in your non-dominant hand. <clears throat> And your pick always sits, your soldering pick always sits in your dominant hand. That way if something happens like the two bezel fell off or something, you won't reach for it with your fingers. Because it's your dominant hand, you're going to instinctively want to reach for it. The soldering pick kind of prevents you from doing that and you can just tap it and move it back into place. Now I like to get in there and get the job done and get out as soon as possible. So that the heat doesn't stay on it. it. The more heat stays on it, the more your torch stays on it, the dirty it's, dirtier it's going to get too. So don't be scared of cranking it up. And now I'm heating up all the metal. You want it evenly heated. But you also want to make sure of the fragile two bezel sitting on top. That will, that will really melt fast compared to your ring band. And now I'm just going to aim on the two bezel, but I'm going to be underneath it and I'm going to move it fast. I'm going to keep this torch moving and it's flowed. I want to keep the torch moving that entire time instead of letting it sit in one spot. Okay, so I quenched it first. I just took it out of the third hand. Now I'm going to drop it into the pickle and let it sit there a minute. Okay, so we've let it sit in the pickle for a few minutes, so let me use the copper tongs to pull it out. Now what I want to do is I want to set the CZ. So let me show you how to set a CZ really quickly using um, the bezel setting tools. Okay, so the bezel setting tools are so quick and easy to use. They make life a lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and grab a ring mandrel. Now normally before you set your CZ, of course you're going to do all your finishing work um, using your flex shaft and any other tools you use um, to clean it all up. But let me quickly just show you how to set the CZ. You want to do this at the end. You want to make sure that it, your stone, it's red, I don't know if you can see it, but you want to make sure that your stone is sitting in there perfectly evenly. You can break the stone if it's not, so just take your time and make sure that it's completely straight. And see how quickly that worked. It's already set. It's already set the stone in place. But again, you'll want to clean your ring first, don't forget, and then you'll want to um, Clean off your entire ring before you set the stone and that will be the last thing you want to do. We. Okay, now I've shown you how to solder a two bezel onto a ring band. I also explained to you about fabricated stones and two bezels and what to buy. I want to show you the other way to solder on a two bezel. Now if you happen to have a band that's narrower than your two bezel, you're going to need to saw out that area and you're going to have to insert the two bezel into the ring band instead of just laying it on top like I already showed you. So, this works great if it's larger than the ring band. However, you're going to have some issues with it and you'll get used to it as you practice. So, what you're going to need to do is here's your ring band and here's your two bezel. And you can see the shape of the two bezel is different and you need to cut these curves into your ring band. So, what you'll want to do is you'll want to saw straight down 
and then you're going to want to file or sand out the curve. Unless you're really good at sawing and you can actually saw that curve out, I would suggest like a needle nose files work great on, um, on just taking out that little tiny curve on either side of the ring band so that it fits flush with the two bezel. Um, do not use cutters and saw it if you're going to do this, this type of um, tube setting inside of a ring band do not use cutters you need to saw it because cutters will damage the metal it'll bend it up um, and it's just a nice cleaner way to do it is with a saw and also do not cut once and then pull the ring band apart remove the material instead so you're going to want to chunk out this material um, and if you don't you will resize the ring so it's really important that you that you cut out exactly the piece that you don't need instead of pulling it apart and reshaping that band. 